a golden goal. The road to Olympic glory runs through Bentonville, Arkansas. We're going to introduce you to a cyclist training to reach that ultimate finish line. After I retired, I decided I was going to make pedals. So I have been making pedals and I've made 439 of them. Music Man. These handmade fiddles are scattered across the world, used by country stars and musical icons. You'll meet the Bentonville man behind this music. Plus, Hip Hop Adventurer. Meet this guy. He's a creative working within the intersection of music, adventure, and community. All that and more on this week's Downtown Now. Welcome to beautiful downtown Bentonville. I'm Dana, this is Aaron, and we like to play a game called Did You Know? I love this game so much. So did you know, according to livability.com, mm -hmm. Bentonville is the eighth best place in the country to raise a family? I actually can believe that. A couple of years ago, I've moved my family from Chicago, my wife, my two beautiful kids, your family is here as well. Yep. This place is unbelievable. So if you're new to watching downtown now, here's a little bit Hello. about our show. Well, first off, hello, hello. exactly. <laughs> Secondly, a little bit about our show. We simply showcase what we believe is the best city in the country. Not the eighth, but the best city in the country. Speaking of the best city in the country, in our belief. Yes. Also, kind of fact. <laughs> but the U.S. mountain biking team has now made this one of their homes. So you're telling me, Dana, that the Summer Olympic Games goes through our streets here in downtown Bentonville? Right, right over there, yeah, it goes right through there. Wow, recently we got a chance to catch up with Team USA as they made that transition into an office space right down Main Street at the Ledger. I think the biggest thing I've realized spending a couple of trips in Bentonville is the power that you guys have to get stuff done. And I think that's kind of the motto of Team USA and like being in Bentonville, having access to so many trails, so much infrastructure, so many cool people and that want to get behind that mission of Team USA and uh, the, like the mountain bike capital of the world, like you really feel that energy. And so I think there's not a lot of other places like that. Say hello to a rising star in the biking world, Riley Amos. Riley is the first US male to win a World Cup. He's a six time national champ. And now he'll be spending plenty of time in Bentonville, Arkansas, preparing not only for the 2024 Paris games, but also the LA games in 2028. Like we have the power to tell them exactly what we need. We can build a track to simulate the Olympic games. Like we can, we can do whatever we need to do to be as ready as we possibly can be here. It definitely feels like a mountain bike capital, that's for sure. Like the fact that we can just get on a trail from downtown and have access to hundreds and hundreds of miles of single track is pretty special. I don't think you'll find many other places like that, if at all, in the world. And of course, you can't have an Olympic story without that dream of standing on the mm. podium, hearing your national anthem, and snagging a medal. It's pretty special. And Riley's pretty excited about the possibility of sharing that Olympic medal with all of us. The amount of people who kind of make Bentonville what it is, just thinking about that many people sharing that win would be pretty special. And thinking about, you know, if every person who supports Bentonville and Bentonville Cycling in the, this capital, Mount my capital of the world, like having a little chunk of that medal, I mean, that sounds pretty damn special to me, that's for sure. Hey, that's just another feather in our cap proving that we are the mountain biking capital of the world. Right here in Bentonville. Right here in Bentonville. We talked to Bruce Dunn. He runs bike races here in Northwest Arkansas, and he agreed with Riley the future of the Stars and Stripes is being impacted right now by our city. Over the years, you may have attended Pickin' on the Square right here on the Bentonville Square. Well, one of those musicians, Arnold Lane, custom makes fiddles from right here in Bentonville. We're going to show you his Lane of Various fiddle. <laughs> Everything I've ever done in my life, I've done it my way. 92-year-old Arnold Lane has been doing music his way for 86 years. 
I have played. I played uh, about all my life. I played, started playing when I was six years old, and uh, my dad was a real good fiddle player, and he played the fiddle real good too. Mr. Lane crafted his first fiddle at 14. And I built that old fiddle, and I played that thing, and it was a good fiddle, but it looked terrible. And um, I always wanted to make fiddles, and uh, that's what started me. In 1948, Lane and his wife, Irma Dean, moved to Bentonville to raise their own kids, two of them, in a town of just 2,400 residents. What was Bentonville like back then? It was wonderful. <laughs> it was wonderful. I, we knew nearly everybody in town, and everybody knew us. We've enjoyed living in Bentonville so much. When his children were grown and his small town was growing up too, Lane turned back to music. After I retired, I decided I was going to make fiddles. So I have been making fiddles and I've made 439 of them. Using every type of wood imaginable. Really try to make the difference. The fiddle crafting process seems painstakingly detailed. It looks so complicated <laughs> and precise. Well, it is kind of complicated, but uh, I don't know. I like a challenge, and I guess it's a challenge one. Finished fiddles remain in his home. Others have been enjoyed by fans of Mr. Lane's craftsmanship. I've got a picture of Soji Tabuchi playing one of my fiddles. Mm -hmm. And then I met him over in Harrison at the Fiddler's Convention over there. One of a kind, custom labors of love, crafted right here on Blueberry Lane. It's what's keeping me alive, really, making those fiddles. And if you'd like to see Mr. Lane's Fiddles in Action, CMA Musician of the Year for multiple years, Jenny Fleener uses his fiddle in a music video with Carly Pierce. I do love me a good fiddle. <laughs> yes, you do. But let's stick with that music theme. Each and every month from April to October, our amazing team in downtown Bentonville puts on world-class events. We pack about 10,000 people onto this square for everything from food, family fun, to world-class music. Yes, we do. Recently, our headliner was a Northwest Arkansas native who is making it big in Hollywood. Bentonville, it's a good night. Something about the energy here that you can't explain, honestly. Like the people walking around, and this is so cool. Like, I'm like, this is where I want to be right now. When trying to make it big in music, you usually have to leave home. But ironically, there's nothing quite like home. That's why I spot as a headliner at Downtown Bentonville Incorporated's first Friday was special for Madison Watkins. It's so surreal. I think when you grow up in a place like Arkansas and then you leave, you realize how amazing Arkansas is and how supportive everybody is. And honestly, like this is a career moment for me. Madison grew up in Northwest Arkansas, but moved to Los Angeles to chase her dreams. And she's done well. She was in the top 12 of American Idol. Her social media has nearly a quarter of a million followers, but it's her music the words within those songs and the message behind them both that separate Madison from other pop up and comers. Make no mistake about it, the songs she writes are uniquely her own. A tune about curly hair simply called Curls, a tear jerking number about a daughter's love for her mom. and this upbeat plea to her future significant other. Whoever I end up with, he has a lot of songs about him. He's a really lucky guy. How much do you put your own life into these songs? They, they are my life. <laughs> Every lyric is like something I've gone through or something that I'm experiencing right now. So note by note and tune by tune, Madison Watkins continues to gain a following. Put your hands together! A following that comes with the responsibility that she refuses to shy away from. 
growing up here, I never knew that I could genuinely become like a pop star. And it's happening. And it's like, I, I can look at these younger girls and tell them like, you can do anything you set your mind to. And you can do it in a good way. You can do it in a way that's honoring to yourself and honoring to other people. And you can be a good role model. You follow Madison. I do. I follow Madison. She's a great follow. If you want to be one of the other quarter of a million followers on social media, you can search for her. It is at Madison underscore Watkins. Have you been to Yayo's? Love that place. What do you like to eat there? Queso and cheese dip. Blend them together. They're the same thing, but put them both together. <laughs> We're going to tell you a little bit about that famous Bentonville restaurant start. And that really starts with the Rios family. Uh, their passion for bringing the soul of Mexico right here to Bentonville starts with three key ingredients. Family, heritage, and love of the land. There's nothing purer than connection to the land. The popular Bentonville restaurant you now know as Yeyo's began in 2006 here in Little Flock as Don Rios and his sons Rafael and Roman were navigating a good problem, an overabundance of locally grown produce. They launched a business model based on sustainable farming and began selling produce at the Bentonville Farmers Market in 2008. In 2012, we started our own food truck with the same model, sustainable farming, local farm to table. We then decided that we would open this location, Yeyos uh, El Alma de Mexico, which translates to the soul of Mexico for many reasons. That went really well. Uh, to the point where we became a staple in the city. A staple indeed. That state-of-the-art flagship restaurant located within 8th Street Market is named Yeyo's. Yeyo is the name Rafael and Roman call their father. It's a business focused on sustainable farming, authentic recipes, and family. All of the our concepts are family-oriented. We, we operate the farm with my dad, my sister, my in-laws, uh, it's only 4.5 miles from where we sit right now. The truck is usually run by my wife and my daughter in the summer and other family members as well. And the restaurant, we have seven family members that work here as well, in addition to other key employees that are always considered family. The soul and spirit of Mexico is lovingly created within the walls of Yeyos, which includes salsa and gluten-free, non-GMO corn tortillas, all made in-house. So what we want to do here at Yeyos El Alma de Mexico is literally translate El Alma, the soul of Mexico, in, in, through our food. Uh, what we have is traditional street fair that you find in every corner of Mexico whether it's the south of Mexico through our Cochinita Pibil, which is our baked pork, through the northern part of Mexico with our barbacoa. In my home state in Michoacan, uh, it is carnitas, it is enchiladas, which we make here from scratch to order. Um, it is something that we believe in our hearts nourishes and improves the quality of life of anyone that eats it. And if you haven't been to Yeyo's, you got to try it. I know you've tried it, I have. but they need to try it. And did you know that Yeyo's last year made the New York Times list for the 50 best restaurants in the United States? I can see why. Time for a quick break here on Downtown Now. Up next, we have a hip hop adventurer. Right. I don't know exactly what that is, but we're going to introduce you to Big Piff in our Downtown Conversation. The sun is 93 million miles away. The least we can do is give it a warm welcome each morning. Big Piff works at the intersection of music, adventure, and community. He sat down with Brooke Beerhouse in this week's Downtown Conversation. Epiphany Morrow, known as Big Piff, is a Stanford-educated rapper-turned-entrepreneur from Pine Bluffs, Arkansas. He's made a name for himself on an international scale, but he'll be the first one to tell you he is far from finished. 
Big Piff performs in Bentonville a lot, so today I'm meeting up with him to hear more about his background and ties to Arkansas. Looks like Piff beat us here. I've got his tea, I got a coffee for me, and we're gonna sit down. Piff, it's so good to see you, man. How are you? Start off. Um, Piff, could you tell me a little, like, how do you define yourself? Um, as a person, I say work in progress. Like, I'm always just trying to improve as a person. But uh, as an artist, I say hip hop adventurer now. Nice. Um, yeah, it's something the IRS doesn't respect, but <laughs> it's kind of like my overarching view of like what I do. And I kind of think of it like in three buckets. So it's like the hip hop uh, artistry, right? So from emceeing to making videos to visuals to uh, programming, and it's community oriented, which is like programs I do with from domestically and also like traveling as a cultural ambassador. Wow. And lastly is just uh, life stuff, right? So just shenanigans, good food, things like that. So a lot of my uh, initial connection, especially to Bentonville, came from uh, Crystal Bridges. So I did a, a one-man show, a one-man kind of like theater-based show. It was like music, interaction. I describe it as if the TED Talk was a hip-hop concert wrapped in a Spike Lee narrative. And then from there, we've been doing a lot of work. So I've been doing different um, workshops in the community when they do their outreach, uh, from performances to workshops to kind of just helping them with programming. I do like a hip-hop workshop, and cool. I basically teach people concepts of creativity that they can use for their everyday life, right? So I do these talks and workshops, and I always say like I'm not like a motivational speaker. Nothing against them, but it's more so for me, motivational speaker, to get you amped up, yeah. ready to go. Very much necessary. I'm kind of big on like just leaving little tools and pragmatic tips. So it's like through hip hop and my years of living in the culture, I basically have like learned so much that have helped me become like just a better person. So using the hip hop as like this inroad, it's kind of like here's some stuff that you can use in your life your work, your school, or whatever it may be to kind of like help you better yourself, so. Is that what you do in Ghana as well? Or had you been doing abroad? Yeah, it's a little bit uh, more in depth. So the cultural ambassador, hip hop ambassadorship, essentially we do a go down there, it's like a three part program, especially now, cause I work through a program called Next Level. Cool. And it's, um, we, it's a residency. So we work with these artists about uh, maybe anywhere between like 60 and 80 artists in four different hip hop disciplines. And I initially started coming on just doing the MCs, and you would have a show at the end. So we would teach them, and at the end they would have a show. But also I perform as well, and then we do like one-off workshops in the community, and then kind of like make music with the local artists. What are some words of encouragement you would give to artists who are just starting out? Yeah, I have two, is that yeah. okay? Yeah, yeah. All right, the first is um, do something. So a lot of times we get so caught up in our head or we think our ideas are so great, yeah. And then it's kind of like, you know, if I did that, you see something that happens, it's like, man, I had that same idea. But the difference between having that idea and them executing it is actually doing something. It's straight oh. up, hey, I'm gonna create this, put it out in the world, see what happens, learn. Like, don't always bet on like, when I drop this, the whole game's gonna change. It's more yeah. so like, all right, I made this, this happened, cool. Make something else, make something else, make something else. And the more is more, other ones more like a, um, kind of a life mantra I use nowadays, it's just kind of like, moment by moment controlling what you can control cool right so it's just kind of like at this moment there's no better thing than like be having this interview with you like this conversation yeah. is the dopest thing that could be possible because it's the thing that exists in this moment and then also control what you can control because there's a lot of stuff we trip on that we just don't have power to control so kind of like releasing that especially as artists right because there's all this other stuff going on as creators and it's kind of like you you think you have it or whatever whatever but more so just like hey be in the moment immerse yourself understand what you can control and keep it moving. And if you'd like to learn a little more about Big Piff, head online to bigpiph.com. And if you need something to do on the first Friday of every month, at least in the spring and summer seasons, you gotta come to downtown Bittenville. We're talking about first Friday, after the break on Downtown Now. The sun is 93 million miles.
Wow, that really captures the vibe and the feeling of downtown Bentonville. Chan the man, Chandler Harris edited that for us. He's also editing this show for us. Chandler, thank you. Hi Chandler, great job. Thank you for watching. That's it for us. All right, but make sure you set your dial, even if there are dials anymore. There's no more dials. Maybe okay. your DVR. Yeah, set your DVR. Watch us every Sunday morning at 1030 as we celebrate Bentonville right here on KFSM. See you next week. The sun is 93 million miles away. The least we can do is give it a warm welcome each morning.